as I was saying, who would think a simple garment could be a cursed? It's that clothes. It's that clothes. Huh, really? You think God has pleasure in it's just clothes? You walking around with a shirt with 666 on it? Or with the devil on it? Or with the pentagram on it? It's just clothes. It's just clothes. If you worship it, it ain't just clothes. Just clothes. Plain. One thing, I'm, I like designs and stuff like that. I do love design shirts, cartoons and stuff. I don't worship it. But there are people that worship their clothing. I can't wear it unless it's Nike. I can't wear it unless it's Jordan. I can't wear it unless it's Polo. I can't wear it unless it's Gucci. Well, you better think twice. You showing through your covetous practices that you worship these things. And now you're teaching your kids to worship and you wonder why God destroys whole households in the Old Testament. Because you're teaching your kids the error too. Now your kids can't walk around with a pair of shoes with no name on it because you done embedded Jordan and Nike and Adidas and Polo and Gucci and Versace and Michael Kors into their head. And you wonder why the Lord is upset. You wonder why the land is so defiled. You teach your kids idolatry. And then try to act like, oh, it's just cold. It's just cold. It's just cold. You, you're putting your kids in bondage. You know, people always tell me that a little thing, a little saying, don't treat yourself, treat yourself. Well, don't treat yourself for nothing wicked. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, I said it. I'm gonna say what you don't want to hear, cause I'm not a. I'm not here to please you. If you want that, you might want to go on YouTube and find somebody gonna say some pleasing, comforting words to you. I say you this cause it's loving. I love you. I love you so much to tell you the truth. I love you so much to tell you to stop rebellion. I love you so much to keep telling you if you keep rebelling, God looks at it as witchcraft. I keep telling you, little children, keep yourself from idols for a reason. Idol worship. An idol can be anything. And it was a Babylonian garment. Mm. It's a new place called Babylon out there. It's called America. Babylon. Oh, you didn't know that? Look at America. The God, God says he's angry with the wicked every day. For every statue they erect. God shaking his head. You see, people are tearing. I remember when the COVID-19 and Black Lives Matter movement started. They started running through and tearing down certain statues and keeping some. Well, this is a racist. Let's tear his statue down. Let's keep this one up. Oh, yeah, that's smart. That's so foolish, people. How about you tear all of them down? God has no pleasure in idolatry. I don't care if they were racist or that was a good man. It doesn't matter. What are these statues for? Idolatry. Have you been to Washington, D.C.? I have. Have you watched any movie about New York? Well, we don't worship the Statue of Liberty, but people flock to it every year to see it. We don't worship it. It's just a monument. But people make thousands and thousands of dollars off of people going to see the Statue of Liberty. Idolatry. Oh, it was a gift. Uh, some uh, some land over there in France, uh, they made a statue, they had an extra one. So they gave one to America. And we so stupid, we set it up. Hmm, how ignorant are we? When they son of God? Oh, well, I've been to the capital. It looks like one nation under false gods. One nation under false gods. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I hate it. Houston, it's just a statue. Shut up. Just a statue. 
Just a statue for what? Let me tell you something, people. If you are a good person or an evil person, you will be remembered. You will be remembered for evil or you'll be remembered for good. You don't need no statue to remember somebody. Hmm. Oh, you think God is a liar? You think God is okay with it because the world is okay with it? You think it's all good because you go over to Asia and India, they got statues everywhere and the Lord's just letting it, letting it go on. And God must have, must, must have calmed down a little bit. He, he must don't care. No, because it's, it's reserved for the future. God is such, he giving them a, enough chance to cleanse their land, but that's no big deal because uh, when Jesus comes back and uh, his power and his glory and, and he's coming back like the sun and he's going to burn all that trash up and cleanse the land. You keep it on your land now, it looks good in your yard. That that cherubim statue looks so great. That statue of the Virgin Mary looks great in your yard. It's idolatry. I don't care what you're saying. It's idolatry. God has no pleasure in that stuff. Those who worship me, what's worship me in spirit and truth. And I got I, I, I thought you couldn't see spirits. The Holy Spirit. You can't see it. You can feel it. I'm gonna make a statue of the Holy Spirit. Let me see how this. Oh Lord, I don't, I don't even know how it look. I wonder why. You don't even let me know how the Holy Spirit look. Hmm. People, the land, my people, perish for lack of knowledge. You might want to read the Old Testament sometime. It might open your eyes. It might give you a slap in the face. Wah, 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 wah. The last thing you need is a flawless victory on your soul. A flawless victory. Because God never loses. He always wins. He always conquer evil. So, just make sure that evil is in you. That light. That little great darkness. You see, you're mean. You're mean. You're mean. <laughs> I know. I'm just real. I ain't got time for the games. <clears throat> To obey is better to sacrifice. Promises made to the Lord are binding. I'm talking to some people today. I hope you're listening. Listen closely. If you made a vow to the Lord, Lord, if you bring me out of this distress, I would do this. I would do that. And then the Lord brought you out of this distress. And you go back to doing the exact same thing. You don't serve God like you said you would. You don't spread his word like you said he would. What do you think going to happen? What do you think going to happen to you, old man? What do you think going to happen to you, old woman? It's better to not promise at all. You know, I made a promise to the Lord years ago. And God had made me hold true to that promise. I said, I want to serve your kingdom, Lord. I want to serve your kingdom. That was a promise. That was a statement that came out of my mouth. I can't say it was an error. It came out. Lord, I want to serve you. I went through a, a few times in disobedience and not serving him correctly. Uh, I got hit with a tornado. Blue. Oh, oh, I'm not a, oh, Houston, you're a child of God, you're chosen. You, you, yeah, I may be chosen, but I'm not susceptible. Oh, I don't get a free pass against God's wrath. I know it when the devil. It's kind of weird, I was the only person in the car at a parking lot, riding around in drunkenness, doing things I shouldn't do. And a tornado came. I remember I was in my brother's car on Airport Boulevard, sitting there, waiting for somebody to come out from getting their check. And I had warnings and warnings. The storm was, it was looking like it was, I was like, it's just rain. I'm good. I'm good. With my own mouth, I will prevail. <laughs> it's not that bad out here. He said, uh, the wicked 
hears there's a little bear in the field and runs straight to it. Well, I guess I was wicked right then. Uh, it's a storm out there. Huh? I guess I'll run straight through the storm, Houston. You foolish man. So many signs. Don't go. But me being wicked, I don't know what the world was going on with me at the time. Well, I know what the world happened to me after the fact. I'm sitting in the car. I'm looking around. Some just feel, oh, I'm still, I still commune with God now. Don't get me wrong. Even in my wickedness, I still called upon the Lord. And he heard me. So I'm sitting in the car just waiting. I look up at like the clouds just look crazy. It had cleared it up. It wasn't even raining no more. But it was, I was looking around like it looked real windy out here. What's going on out here? What's going on? I look back, the, the sign looked like a whirlwind is tearing the sign apart. I'm here on the airport over here by Burlington. Then a still voice in my head said, Houston, get out of the car. All right. My sheep know my voice. So I jump out of the vehicle, and as soon as I got in the vehicle, all the windows broke out. A, a swift wind came and knocked every window out of the car. Psh! All right, I, I ain't done yet. I thought I was in Terminator, Judgment Day. I thought my, my soul was gonna be fatalized. <laughs> thought it was gonna be a flawless victory on me. I'm running along the side of the building and every time I reach one side of a business establishment, the glass break out. I reach another, the glass break out. I reach another, the glass break out. I get to the doorway and the glass break out. Let's put it this way. Shortly after that, a change came in my life. This is my third baptism by fire. <laughs> I'm scared of the Lord. I fear him. It took me a few trials and errors to try to get it right, and I'm sure I'm still not all the way right yet. But I'm not finna say he's not done with me yet because I found out he can be, but he gave me another chance. God is merciful. God is graceful. You gotta continue on, continue the work that he's called you to do. You see, everybody's commands are somewhat different. He may tell you one thing and tell me another thing, but you have to obey him. He told the children of Israel exactly what to do. He told the husband and wife exactly what to do. They did the exact opposite. And you see what happened. Fatality. Flawless victory. You understand, people? God is gracious. God is merciful. God is love. God is wrath. God is a God of promise. God is a God of punishment. God is God. No matter how you look at it. I'm going to tell you a story that most people overlook. It is going to show you an example of God's mercy and grace. It is going to go also show God's anger. And one simple situation. You remember when Jesus was on the cross? And yo, he said, your mouth condemns you. And your mouth, what you say, you out your mouth. And one dude just cursing Jesus to death. Cursing him. Oh, saying all kind of evil against him. One man, like, we don't deserve, we don't, we deserve this. He don't deserve, this is a good man, right? He don't deserve this. Just please, let me be where you are. You're like, you was join me in paradise. Where was the other man? God says, Gracious to all those that love me and keep my commands and love me and love me. I don't know who sent those crows around, but them crows kind of made a meal out of his eyeballs. The man that was rebellious, the man that could never come to the knowledge of the truth on the cross, his eyes were eating, eating out. The crows ate good that day. Nobody, nobody listened to that part. He sealed his fate. And the other man sealed his by becoming one with the Lord. Confessing his sins before the Lord. 
The other dude confessed his sin, but he wanted Jesus to go down with him. I'm dying. You need to die too. All right. Well, before you die, since you want to be blind, I'm going to blind you anyway. And then you're going to die. And you're sin. Because unbelief. Rebellion. On the cross. Knowing that Jesus was a good man. And Jesus was the son of God. Oh, I guess he didn't know. But he found out, I bet it was painful. You're already on the cross. Being crucified. And you're just still breathing out threatenings and blasphemies. And thought you was going to get a free pass. The other man did. He got a pass. Because he confessed his sins. They was like the God on the cross. The other man, uh, he died in his. God's word does not lie. Oh, people lie. Why well, nobody talk about these stories that are so true? Two people on the side of Jesus. And I always ask myself, why do people put three crosses up? <laughs> Oh, uh, that's all right. How about two? I'm going to put two crosses up in front of your church. The third one symbolizes rebellion. Or how about no putting none up? Uh, it's up to you. If you don't know the full story, why would you put three crosses up in your church? Why? What is it symbolic of? One sinner died in his sins on the cross but you got three of them why hmm. you gotta ask yourself some things it looks good everybody else doing it let me do it too I don't even know the meaning behind it I just want to do it too when I'm dying in sin that's like putting a putting a uh, statue of Barabbas up for what how about putting no statues up? You understand? Let me pause and I will continue.